Uh, we welcome. <laughs> Today we welcome Tony, a lifelong student and teacher of spirituality, metaphysics, and abundance manifestation, an experienced mentor, a speaker and trainer, and author of Using the Law of Attraction. Tony has been an active member of Unity of London since 2012 and is past president of the board of directors. With his today's presentation, Statement of Faith, part five, items 21 to 30, please welcome Tony Orvitas. Good morning, and thank you very much, Nancy. There seems to be a little screw up with the slide, so let's just hang on two seconds here. Okay, let's see. Ah, oh, there's a beautiful picture of smiling me. Okay, Statement of Faith, Part 5. It's the last of a series. Yeah, I know, disappointing. Today I'll tell you about the final 10 items. And it's coming up. The 32 item Unity Statement of Faith. Now, if you remember from some of my previous outstanding presentations, Sunday messages, Charles Fillmore, co-founder of Unity, wrote the Statement of Faith in response to fundamentalist and evangelical Christians who criticized Unity, criticized about abandoning the doctrines of Christianity. He published it a hundred years ago this year. Two of the 32 items or statements were removed over the years, leaving 30. So you may ask, what were the ones that were removed and what were items 1 to 20? Well, all you need to do is check out the Sunday messages on the Unity of London YouTube channel. Now, what I would like to do is remind you that the words used in these statements are rather dated and admittedly quite gender insensitive, but that's because they're from another time and another generation, right? You may agree with or strongly object to some, all, or none of the statements of faith. I certainly struggle with quite a few of them, or at least parts of them, and I still do. Anyway, we will keep an open mind, like we always try to do, right? Agreed? Take what feels right for you, what resonates with you, and just leave the rest. And then maybe come back to it another time and see if possibly there is a message for you that you might have missed the first time around. Access your inner guidance. Next slide. Aha, yes. Listen to your inner guidance as was suggested in today's daily word reading. By the way, feel free to replace the word God in the statements with something else of your choice if that makes you feel more comfortable, maybe higher power or divine source. For your information, I'll be quoting quite liberally and adapting from Reverend Greg Mueller's book on the subject, using notes from Truth Unity and a review of Unity Metaphysics compiled by the now defunct Unity Correspondence School, which I'll call UCC. Each statement begins with the words, I believe, even though the term we may not necessarily include you or me. We'll review the statements one at a time. Here goes. 21, we believe that spirit, soul, and body are a unit and that any separation of these three is a transgression of divine law. We believe that the death that came into the world through the Adamic man resulted in body dissolution, and that the restoration of the lost Eden is already begun in the demonstration over the death of the body as shown in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Kind of confusing. Let's talk about it. UCC material declares the three phases of our being are body, soul, spirit. These three function as a unit, and consciousness of their oneness must be maintained if we are to express and manifest as God intended. Now, the key for us is the realization that the body is malleable. It's formed or shaped 
by the matrix of the mind. The lost Eden represents a state of awareness in which we are so connected to our oneness with God that we are clear channels through which life, love, wisdom, and substance flow. You see, we all have the power to transform the projection that we call the physical body. Charles Fillmore said, when man realizes that there is but one body idea and the conditions of his body express the character of his thought, he has the key to bodily perfection and immortality in the flesh. Quite the concept, isn't it? Okay, number 22. We believe that the dissolution of spirit, soul, and body caused by death is annulled by rebirth of the same spirit and soul into another body here on earth. We believe the repeated incarnations of man to be a merciful provision of our loving father to the end, that all may have opportunity to attain immortality through regeneration, as did Jesus. This corruptible must put on incorruption. Now, this one's all about reincarnation, a very sensitive subject, controversial. I must admit, I always found it difficult to accept the idea that we only had a few years of physical life here on Earth and then, at death, experienced eternal reward or punishment, depending on whether we got it right or not. I preferred the idea that life was a school with opportunities to learn how to live it along with the provision for lessons to be relearned in another lifetime. The old Unity Correspondence Course material says, reincarnation is the re-embodiment of man in physical form, the rebirth of an individual in a new human body. We can talk more about this subject during one of my upcoming Sunday messages. Suffice it to say that when we pass on and arrive at the pearly gates. Our friends will greet us wearing multiple name tags. All right, moving on. Number 23. We believe that the kingdom of heaven or harmony is within man and that through man, the law and order existing in divine mind are to be established on the earth. UCC material says the kingdom of heaven is in reality Christ consciousness. It does not depend on location in space, but is a mental state that may be attained in any place. Now, the widespread belief in heaven and hell as actual places to which souls are consigned for eternal bliss and or punishment is due first to the influence of Greek mythology and Oriental mysticism, and secondly, to the fact that most people have personified God. Heaven is within you. So my previous comment about meeting friends at the pearly gates really doesn't apply, or maybe does. The Metaphysical Bible Dictionary notes that most Christians today are teaching that heaven is a place to which people who accept Jesus as their savior will go when they die. There is no authority in the Bible for such a doctrine. Heaven is merely a condition of mind. 24, we believe that the second coming of Jesus Christ is now being fulfilled, that his spirit is quickening the whole world. For as the lightning cometh forth from the east and is seen even unto the west, so shall be the coming of the Son of Man. Watch therefore, for ye know not on what day your Lord cometh. Now the UCC material says his second coming has been a matter of controversy always because the letter was being read instead of the spirit. 
all the symbols that are given in the description of his second coming have a spiritual application. He comes when he is received into your consciousness and revealed to you. Second coming. Well, it's not something that happens outside of us. It's the awakening of spiritual awareness within ourselves. It does not happen to us, but through us. Charles Fillmore said, let us cease expecting Christ to come in bodily form. Let us turn our attention to his risen body already within us. In this way, we shall cooperate with him in setting up the kingdom of the heavens on the earth. Pretty neat, huh? Okay, number 25. We believe that the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, should be the standard of action between all men. Jesus stated it this way, whatever you wish that men would do to you, do so to them. Now, virtually every world religion has some manner in which it expresses this universal idea. Imagine, imagine if this world, if we all practice this principle without exception, not only is this golden rule a model for human interaction, but also a reminder of an underlying spiritual principle. What would we would receive, we must first give. Charles Fillmore said, there can be no permanent peace or even civilization on earth until the golden rule laid down by him, Jesus, is adopted by nations in commercial and in all other relationships. So if you will faithfully practice the golden rule and send only thoughts of love to everyone, you will witness practical results. You can cultivate the habit of seeing the good, the true, the bright side of every subject and every circumstance. Truth Unity tells us attaining the Christ perfection begins by recognizing the same Christ perfection in all others. Calling forth the Christ nature in ourselves is not possible without calling forth the same Christ nature in everyone else. Twenty-six. We believe that Jehovah, Jehovah God, is incarnate in Jesus Christ, and that all men may attain the Christ perfection by living the righteous life. Ye therefore shall be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. So we have perfection within us. Yes, some of us express more perfection than others. Don't you agree? But the same perfection is within everyone. Because we have God's perfection within us, we shall be perfect when we acknowledge this indwelling Christ and allow it to rule our lives instead of our distorted concept, this distorted human understanding of life and the human ego. The same Christ, the same innate power and ability that existed in Jesus is in you, in all of us. It's a difficult concept for many to accept. The difference between a Mother Teresa and a Hitler is in the expression. The one follows the light while the other seeks the darkness. The same potential, however, no matter how well it is kept hidden, is still there in them, in all of us, awaiting recognition. 27, that's a long one here. We believe that the word of God is the thought of God expressed in creative ideas, and that these ideas are the primal attributes of all enduring entities in the universe, visible and invisible. The logos of the first chapter of the Gospel of John is the God idea or Christ that produced Jesus, the perfect man. We believe that the scriptures are the testimonials of men who have, in measure, 
apprehended the divine logos, but their writings should not be taken as final. Okay, the word logos in the original writings means the word, the thought word, the creative idea, the uh, creative power. The logos is the rational principle of the universe. It's both reason and speech. In man, they also call it the I am. We read in the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us full of grace and truth. Now, many confuse Jesus with Christ. Let's be clear. Jesus of Nazareth was a man, albeit a perfect man, our way shower, in whom dwelt Christ's consciousness, as it does in you, as it does in me. And please note that final comment that the scriptures should not be taken as the final word. Number 28, here's another long one. We believe in the final resurrection of the body through Christ. We believe that we do free our mind and resurrect our body by true thoughts and words, and that this resurrection is being carried forward daily and will ultimate in a final purification of the body from all earthly errors. Through this process, we should be raised to the consciousness of continuous health and eternal life here and now, following Jesus Christ in the regeneration or new birth. Hmm. Charles Fillmore tells us, to be resurrected means to get out of the place that you're in and to get into another place. Resurrection is a rising into new vigor, new prosperity, a restoration to a higher state. Now, Reverend Nettler interestingly says about this particular statement, it is logical to assume that when we attain this level of Christ consciousness and expression, we will have the perfect body, free from limitation over which we have perfect control and the power to make it visible or invisible as we are directed by spirit, as well as the ability to appear on any plane of being at any time. Uh, well, that may seem logical to him, but perhaps a bit out there for many of us. Further on, he says, at some point in this lifetime or another, we begin to realize that we are spiritual beings living in a benevolent spiritual universe. This change in awareness is the birth of a new life experience and a change of focus. 29, getting close to the end. We believe all the doctrines of Christianity spiritually interpreted. Now, the Christian Bible came out of the Middle East, as you know, and it reflects the literary customs, habits, and culture of the Semitic people of that time. They were accustomed to parables, allegories, rich symbolic language. If we read the Bible as merely an historical record or even as a guide to morals and behavior, we will find much inconsistency in those writings and fail to recognize the deep layers of spiritual truth which they contain. The superficial reader, and that's been me in the past, will overlook or be unable to comprehend the wonderful description of the creative action of divine mind, which is told in the Bible stories through a system of rich symbolism, meanings beyond the obvious. Charles Fillmore believed that to understand the inner meaning of the scriptures, we needed to get into the same state of mind as the author at the time he wrote them. And that practical Christianity, like in unity, provides the key to unlock the mysteries and the hidden meanings of the scriptures for us all. And finally, number 30, Almighty Father Mother, we thank thee for this vision of thine 
omnipotence, omniscience, and omnipresence in us and in all that we think and do in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen to what Reverend Nettler tells us about this one. With this simple benediction, unity statement of faith comes to a close. When Charles Fillmore wrote the statement of faith, it was a credo of his own beliefs. Hmm. Wonder what happened there, Larry. Anyway, when he taught classes, he never insisted that anyone had to accept his beliefs. He left everyone free to believe as they chose. So if you found any principle in this collection of truth concepts, which resonated with your soul, then accept it as Charles Fillmore's gift. If there were any statements with which you could not agree, leave them and know that you are free to do so. All right. He then says, may this list of beliefs provide you the inspiration to examine your own consciousness to discover and clarify what you do believe in the depths of your soul. You may also choose to revisit this document from time to time to discover if any part of your personal credo has changed, expanded, evolved. As Waldo, Ralph Waldo Emerson said, if I believed today what I believed yesterday, I would cease to grow. Mark Hicks of Truth Unity states, some people believe that the tra traditional language of Christianity is not fitting or appropriate for a modern spirituality, and that unity should abandon its Christian heritage. He goes on to say, I hope to convince you that what is important today is not doctrine, not language, but seeing with the single eye of truth. Peace be still, and know that there is truth contained in these 32 statements, if you will approach them with wisdom and understanding. Anyway, it was 1984 when Unity ceased publication of the Statement of Faith. If you recall, the statement first appeared in print in 1921 in the February 12th issue of Weekly Unity. In 1935, items 28 and 29 were removed and 30 to 32 renumbered. They were then edited over the years and eventually totally taken out of publication. Now, is it possible that Unity leadership in 1984 chose to abandon the statement of faith because they were worried how the general public would accept this unique and unusual interpretation of the Christian faith? Or was it because the statements were so controversial, sexist, difficult to understand, old fashioned? Charles Fillmore wrote this, we have considered the restrictions that will follow a formulated program and are hereby giving warning that we shall not be bound by this tentative statement of what unity believes. We may change our minds tomorrow on some of the points and if we do, we shall be free to make a new statement of faith in harmony with the new viewpoint. So what is your statement of faith? Do you even need one? What do you think? May I suggest to you that you do not need a formal statement. Since, as we previously read in the Daily Word, the divine presence in you is your light and the source of everything that you need. Everything that you need to live brilliantly and joyfully. And with that, let's go into meditation. We'll initially do a guided meditation and then go into silence. Meditation is based on one developed by our friend, Reverend Nettler of Unity Church Universal. Allow your mind to relax, become still. Take a deep breath in. 
Exhale gently. Take another deep breath and calm your monkey mind as best you can. Assume a comfortable position so there's no feeling of tension or strain in your body. Both feet flat on the floor. Hands comfortably in your lap with either both palms up to receive blessings or one palm up and the other down to receive and give a blessing. Close your eyes. Be still. Relax. Let my words be yours. Affirm softly or silently. My body is the outpicturing of my consciousness. As I change and evolve in my body, I change and evolve in my mind and vice versa. My journey to spiritual enlightenment is assured. No matter what life brings, there's nothing to fear, for I have an indomitable spirit. The kingdom of heaven is within me. I am a channel through which divine truth becomes manifest on this earth. I speak the word of truth only and create my perfect world. I rise up in the perfection in which I was created. As I look with a desire to know truth and remain open and receptive, the spirit within me reveals the deep wisdom of source. Now rest in the silence, letting those affirmations reveal their truth to you. Gradually return your awareness, first to your physical body, then to your surroundings. Say to yourself, the Christ within me is with me always. No matter how outer conditions appear to my senses, I am a perfect spiritual being, functioning through an illumined mind and a vitalized body. And so it is. Amen. Thank you very much, Tony. On behalf of all of the listeners, both now and in the future, who are intent on learning all of the details that your research presented about the statement of faith, first formed in 1921. I'm sure that those people will be absolutely grateful. Your research was uh, certainly in depth. I was most fascinated by the golden rule of all the faiths. And, and it links us in a very tangible way to not just unity of unity faith, but to faiths all over the world. And we thank you for your sharing. And I think we now move to our song. God is my source. 
God is my power. God gives me everything I need. So I give thanks for all my blessings. God gives me everything I need. Love, love is my source. Love is my power. Love gives me everything I need. So I Gives me everything I need. Joy, joy is my source. Joy is my, source. Joy is my power. Joy gives me everything I need. So I give thanks, so I give thanks for all my blessings. Joy gives me everything I need. Peace, peace is my source. Peace is my power. Gives me everything I need. So I give thanks for all my blessings. Peace gives me everything I need. God, God is my source. God is my power. God gives me everything I need. So I give thanks for all my blessings. Gives me everything I need. Oh, God is my source. God is my power. God gives me everything I need. So I give thanks for all my blessings. God gives me everything I need. God is my source. God is my power. Everything and every little thing that I need, and I give thanks for all my blessings. God gives me everything I need. God gives me everything I need. Oh God, God gives me everything I need. God gives me everything, everything I. With that thanks of gratitude, we now thank our source for all of our abundance. And abundance is all around us. We only need to feel the chairs we're sitting on, look at the people we love, remember the last meal we had, think of the health care we receive. We have abundance all around us. We can now transfer any donations, any ties to Unity of London at hotmail.com. And that's at the bottom of this. We thank everybody who gives gifts, who gives spontaneous gifts or who ties regularly. And we now move very quickly to our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds me. I am the light. The love of God enfolds me. I am the love. The power of God protects me. I am the power. The presence of God watches over me. I am the presence. Wherever I am, God is, and all is well. Yay, God.
it's Celebration Sunday. So, and I see Nancy has her hand up. So, so Nancy, you're the first to celebrate. What well, would you like to celebrate? An unexpected blessing. I got a a second vehicle. So now Colleen has a car and I have one and it's a beautiful vehicle. I got it from um, Suzanne and Chuck's sister and brother-in-law. It's wonderful. And I already tried it <laughs> going awesome. up here with my mom's and it's just tickety-boo. Oh, so that's great. It's a freedom that I'm really aware of. So many don't have and I really appreciate that I had this opportunity. Yay, Nancy. And Peter and Claudette have their hand up. Uh, you just need to, there you go. Hi, everybody. Good to see hey, you Peter. all. Uh, just thought we'd let you know that uh, we bought a brand new vehicle and gave the other one, which was about seven years old, to our granddaughter. All right. Yay. Thanks for sharing, Peter. Who else has something to celebrate? Elaine Corvo, so nice to see you. You just need to unmute, Elaine. <coughs> I had my 80th birthday on. I'm feeling great. It's bothering me. You had your 80th birthday, you're feeling great, and you look great too. Yay, <laughs> Elaine. Yay. Who else? I have something, Polly. Um, somebody said I have, but I didn't see who it Me. was. Chuck. Chuck, Chuck Sample. Yay, Chuck. Yes, I am going to get my hip replaced in October. And the miracle of it is, is that a, a month or so ago, I called them and they told me I was looking at a year and a half wait. And I've already been waiting about a year and a half. So just out of the blue... I get the call and they said, we've decided we're going to do you in October. Like right hey. now. So I hey. thought that was astonishing to me. And I also uh, uh, celebrate Nancy getting that car because it's a beauty. And it was so nice to see it go to somebody that we know. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. I think Tony, Tony, did you have your hand up? Yeah. And um, then Peggy. Celebrating the fact that... Um, my friend and little brother from British Columbia is uh, going to be visiting here today. I haven't seen him since, uh, well, since before COVID started. So it's kind of a special experience. Really excited about it. All right. Thanks, Tony. And Peggy Matzer had her hand up. Peggy? Yes. Hi. Sorry to be out coming on late. We also had visitors from Victoria, James and Brian. You all know James from Unity. And uh, they just left, and, and now Janet's brother is here, so it's pretty busy. Mm -hmm. But we wanted to come on for the meeting, and also I'm celebrating my 71st birthday on Tuesday. Oh, oh yay! Okay. Starting happy celebrating. Birthday. Happy early birthday. <laughs> <laughs> looking great. Must be that unity spirit. It's keeping everybody looking young. <laughs> it must be it. Okay. Maybe Anybody we could else? bottle it and sell it. <laughs> Um, Tony? No. Anybody else? Oh, it's Sylvia Vanderhoek. I think everybody knew, knew last week, but I celebrated my 64th birthday on September the 3rd. So. Yay. 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 Happy, birthday. Happy birthday, Sylvia. If we were all together in person, we could be singing happy birthday, but I don't <laughs> even try to sing it all together online. It would sound weird. But we're sending out heartfelt wishes to our birthday folks. Renee, did you have your hand up? You just need to unmute. Yes, I uh, just want to say that my son turned 24 on Friday. It's my middle born. So, oh, yay. All right. <laughs> all right. Happy birthday. Happy <laughs> birthday. Larry. And Paula. Paula and then George. Paula? Mute. Just need to. Uh, yeah. 
I, I've got four birthdays in September, two of people who've moved on, my mom and um, a friend, and uh, um, my grandson, who's very much alive in his 20s. <laughs> and um, the last one, uh, I've forgotten who it was. I think it was me. Uh, mine is at the end of August. <laughs> We have to celebrate ourselves, oh. don't we? <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> and could I just say something? I don't know. Tony, um, you add a lot of balance to our speakers. And I missed a bit because my granddaughter came in, but I'll catch it um, on my TV in the week. But as a fairly new person, and I hear some people have been here a long while, um, you give me some background into unity and, and what it stands for. And um, the ladies who come on give us the, the, the special heart which we need as well. So I think it's a wonderful balance. And so I celebrate being a member of unity. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for sharing that, Paula. <laughs> okay, and I'm sure Tony yeah. appreciates that too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you. And, and George Rand. George, we're so happy to see you and Barb. Yes. So I'm really glad to be back. I begin to wonder if I was going to make it. But I'd like to thank all the doctors and nurses, and sure, great to see all you people today. And thank you, Tony. Good to see you too, George, you and Barb. And we send our love and heartfelt wishes for continuing recovery. Anyone else? I don't see any. I think Jack. Oh, Teresa or Jack? Jack? You just need to unmute Jack. Yes. We were at Unity a couple of days ago, cut some grass, and we see somebody uh, putting in a fancy, fancy door at Unity of London. And I want to celebrate Chris for doing an awesome, awesome job there. Oh, yay. Hey, Chris. Thanks to Chris. I think Chris and Lorraine maybe went for a little snack, but we'll thank we'll thank Lorraine and Chris when, during our meeting. I saw that door too. Lois and I went by. Not only a new door, but a new little mailbox. This little black, beautiful oh, no. mailbox, which I took a while to figure out. You just put things in the top slot, but it looks good. Thanks. What, was it painted yet? It was. Well, the door wasn't, the box was black. A lovely little mailbox. Nice. They're, they're going to paint the door this week. What hey. color? Oh, orange. Zeal. Orange. The color of zeal. Oh, yay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I wonder who influenced that. Might it be our board president? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> something, something bright and inviting. Yes. Yes. And it'll go nice with the brick. Yes, yes, it's coming along nicely. Yeah. Anyone else have anything to celebrate or share with Tony? Amber. And you're muted, Amber. Yes, I was. Okay. I just wanted <laughs> to say thank you, Tony, for um, your presentation today. I would have never been able to discern uh, the 30 uh, statements without your help and um, it brought a lot of um, deeper meaning to them for me so thank you for doing all the research uh, behind that to to bring it to light for myself and everybody thanks so so much thank you and I, I really have to give credit to the resources particularly Reverend Nettler who uh, actually wrote uh, a small book on that on that particular subject? Ah, uh, it took yeah. some took some work getting through it. I'm telling yeah. you, for those of you that had <laughs> to bet. listen to me for for five sessions, <laughs> it must have been <laughs> quite a chore. <laughs> well done. Well done. Yeah, There's well Linda done. Brackstone. Hi, Linda. Hi, Linda. Hey, Linda. Good Ooh. to see you. Yeah. So I'm going to suggest over the next five minutes, people can keep chatting, maybe just unmute yourself if you want to have conversation. And for those of us that have been on since before 1030, we'll maybe take a five minute nature break and uh, start at 1135 with the town hall meeting. Sounds good.
Thanks, Sylvia. I must end the screen. Can you hear me, Pauline? Yes, I can. I just wanted to thank Tony for a remarkable message today. And I just want to back up what was already said about, you know, I think it's really important for us to really know what unity is all about. That's definitely not a talk we can have every Sunday, but what an amazing um, culmination of your, of your talks, Tony. I just really um, admired and respected your delivery, the, the facts, and um, that really unity is all about raising your Christ consciousness and wanting to be more like Jesus, not being Jesus himself. It's like, I don't want to be Tony. I don't want to be Amber. I don't want to be Pauline, but I want to be the best and the highest consciousness I can be. And wow, what a great delivery. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Friends.